Okay, good afternoon everybody. It's Bart from MultiRotorForums.com and uh, I'm starting a new build and I'm going to share it with you guys at the website. Uh, I'm taking the motors, ESCs, and frame from this helicopter. I'm going to combine it with the DJI A2 flight control system from this helicopter. And what I'm going to do is just make a simple four motor quad that's going to have a GoPro uh, Zemus H3 3D camera mount. I'm going to use the A2 flight control system and I'm going to make a GoPro quad. I've made one of these in the past. This time it's going to have two 6,000 milliamp uh, 6S batteries for power so I'm hoping to have about 30 minutes of flying time and I'm also going to use the little trick that I started doing about a year and a half ago using a module from Pololu.com to enable me to control the helicopter either as a single person operator uh, manipulating the camera and everything uh, but then also being able to flip a switch fly it in carefree mode and hand over control of the camera and uh, effectively pan of the camera mount uh, to a second operator and I've done it with this helicopter that we're looking at I've done it with uh, a GoPro quad with a NASA and it's worked great so we're gonna do it with this new one so using components from these two helicopters a new camera mount that's in the mail on its way. Uh, we're going to make a new helicopter. Okay, so we have done the introduction. You saw uh, why we're doing this. I have an A2 flight control system. I have some motors. I have frames, props. I have a stack of six cell batteries. And with the recent release of DJI's uh, Inspire 1, I was kind of inspired, I was inspired, inspired to come up with a quadcopter, a four motor quadcopter uh, with a GoPro, brushless stabilized GoPro mount and my DJI, my underused DJI A2 uh, flight control system. So I'm trying to make something that's similar in capability to the Inspire without it being an Inspire just because I've been inspired. So what I did was I wrote down the basic things that go into the build and this is how I do things. I come up with a spreadsheet and I, um, I map out the weights of all the things that I think I'm going to use and then I go to uh, the performance tables for the particular motors that I'm considering using and I look at loads, amps, RPMs, those sorts of things and go back and look at my weights and I, I try to work my way through this iterative process until I have a combination of things that all work together. So the things that I was considering uh, for this build, I have two different sets of motors that I can use. One is the Tiger MT 4008-18. It's 300 kV up to uh, six cell packs. The other thing I have available, um, I have the KDE Direct 4012 XF. These are a 400 kV motor. Um, I looked at both of these. I looked at the weights and I think I'm going to go with the Tiger. If I were to make this helicopter so that it could carry much larger batteries, if I were to make it so that it could carry a range of cameras, I would be using the uh, KDE Direct motors because they have a much greater lifting capability than these smaller Tiger motors. But this is a very specific build for a very specific uh, design criteria and this motor is uh, more appropriate for it. So I could always go back and retrofit these KDE motors but right now I'm going to go ahead on the premise that we're using the Tiger motor. So let's fill in the blanks here. I'm using one of my XY frames and that's going to be about uh, 750 grams. The motors, those motors are about uh, 125 each. The ESCs <clears throat> are about 35 each. And the propellers, we'll call those uh, 20. Power distribution is just going to be a harness with some wires. It's probably going to be about 75 grams. And the batteries I know are about 880 each. So that's 1,000, 
760 for two. So let's move these out of the way. This is the camera mount that it's going to use. It's going to use, like we have right here, the H3 3D. And this has two axis stabilization plus a third axis. But the third axis only moves about 20 degrees in either direction. So it's kind of like um, a glorified two axis camera mount. But we'll talk about this more in the build thread. This is the module we're going to use to go from one-man control to two-man control, uh, thus enabling the camera operator in a two-man situation to have full pan and tilt control of the helicopter, even though it's a two-axis, basically a two-axis camera mount. But we'll talk about this in the build thread. And I talked about this last year, and I just never got around to uh, elaborating on it, but that's the little gizmo I use. So... The frame, the motors at 125 each, that's going to be 500. The ESCs, there's going to be four of those, so that's uh, 140. Props, that's going to be 80. So 750, 500, let's go 0, 0, 0, 0, 5, 5, 5, 9, 17, 24, 30, 10, 1516 ends up being the weight for our uh, mechanical stuff frame motors ESCs batteries so that's 3305 grams and I'm just gonna double check that on my phone this video is not going to be the most interesting video you ever see so my apologies 750 plus 500 plus 140 plus 80 plus 75 plus 1760 equals three, uh, 3305, that's right. So over on, the, over on the other side of the equation we have uh, the flight control system and the DJI uh, literature calls that 225 grams by RC stuff I just mean a receiver and some more wires and then the video transmitter uh, we're gonna call that about 50 grams now the H3 3D camera mount is 210 the GoPro is about 80 grams and then miscellaneous will th throw in another 30 grams zip ties, uh, isolation, you know, soft materials. So that's going to be 5, 2, 7, that's 12, 13, 21, 645. So 645 over here is 10, 5, 9, 3. So 3,950 grams. That's total flying weight okay now when I'm trying to get this all sized out I then look at that divided by 4 so 3950 divided by 4 is roughly 1000 grams per motor so 4000 about 4,000 grams is what the helicopter is going to weigh and that's when it's hovering that's how much lift the four motors have to make so you just divide that weight by four and you see that each motor is going to be carrying a thousand grams now if I go back to my calculator on my phone 1,000 divided by 454 that's 2.2 .2 pounds now I'll show you the charts that I went to to do this. I'll put them on the screen. I don't have them right here in front of me. But using 14.5 props, I'm actually using Zor 14.6 props. Like I said, I have a lot of extra stuff at this point in the shop. So I'm using what I have, having been inspired. 2.2 um, pounds per motor. I'm looking for a motor with 14 inch props that's going to give me uh, the performance I need, you know, the lift I need at about 60 to 65 percent power. So using 14 by 5 props on the table for those motors at the RC Tiger Motor website, I think it's called, 
uh, 14 5 props at 65% power should have 960 grams of thrust. So that's dead on. And that's going to be 4.7 amps per motor. So even if I look at it, if I call it 5 amps per motor, right? It's over here. 5 amps per motor. That is going to be 20 amps total. Okay, 20 amps total going into a battery that's uh, 6 amp hours. It's going to be 6 divided by 20. So 6 amp hours divided by 20 equals the number of, or the percentage of an hour, or the part of an hour that the batteries are going to last. So 6 divided by 20. So it's 6, amp, or 6 amps for an hour divided by 20 amps. So that's going to tell me what part of an hour. So it's 0.3. That should be my duration. So multiply that by 60, 18 minutes. That doesn't sound right. I'm sorry, it's 12. Duh. This is 12 because there's going to be two of those 6,000 battery, 2,000, I'm sorry, there's going to be two 6,000 milliamp hour battery packs. So two 6,000s equals 12,000 total milliamps of uh, capacity. So it's 12 divided by 20, which is going to be double that. So 12 divided by 20 is 0.6, right? That's double. So now you do 0 0.6 times 60, and that equals 36 minutes. But you want to do 0 0.8 of that. So 36 times 0.8 equals 28.8. If you can still see that, if you guys are following along, that is duration. That's the target duration for how long the helicopter should fly um, with this whole scenario in place. So if the weight of the helicopter comes in at or below th uh, 3,950 grams and if the motors are able to make um, about a thousand grams each at 5 amps per motor when you multiply it by 4, you get 20 amps total. That's what the helicopter should draw when it's hovering. And then you take your 12,000 milliamp hours of capacity and divide it by your amps. So it's 12 divided by 20. That gives you 0.6 hours, but you're only going to draw your batteries down 80% of full capacity. So we should be looking at 28.8 .8 minutes if all of this works the way it's supposed to work and if I <clears throat> don't overbuild the helicopter, make it heavier than it should be. This is the first goal. We have to come in at or below that weight. And if I can do that, all this other stuff being what it is, we should have almost 30 minutes of duration carrying a GoPro stabilized with a brushless uh, camera mount, a DJI A2, which is a full functioning um, flight control system and uh, you know hopefully I won't have any of the problems that other people are having I think the newer firmware people are reporting a much better uh, much better outcome using it and uh, all this other stuff should work out alright so that's it thanks for watching I'm gonna start building this this week I have everything that I need so uh, this ought to go pretty quickly thanks for watching any questions feel free to ask in the thread at multirotorforums.com.